Hey there, Dan Gus Jew here. Today's video is about working with Adrian to continue assembling the Detroit diesel and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Last week we replaced the springs in the oil pressure regulator and actually forgot a little bit of footage from when we had the pump apart, so we'll start there. This is the oil pump gear set. Mm -hmm. Let's see, it's... it's been sitting still for a while at some yeah, point, at some hasn't point, it? Yeah, some point, yeah, like mm. it's had a window there. Um, I'd like to have seen it probably running maybe a bit closer and maybe some light polishing on there, but not, ah, not right. scoring, but just polished. Yeah, so there's obviously a clearance gap there if it's yeah. not... Um, and is that shimmed or anything, or...? No, the, the gears are bushed, which... Um, Got to be reamed to size once they're fitted and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the bushes are in the, in the top half of the shaft for this for this gear. They do feel pretty good, you know. And no plays. Oh, it's a little bit front to back there. Yeah. But which we would expect. You can actually feel if you run your finger there. You'll feel the. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, yeah, it's up to the housing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. just under, so yeah. yeah. It'd be nice to see it a bit closer. But a bit closer there, yeah. So you're just losing a bit of pressure out there? Yeah, it'll just float around the back. Yep. Um, the gears are fairly, they've done some work. Mm. A little bit of scoring on them, isn't there? Yeah. And they're working right on the end of the teeth, like they're not working the full length of the tooth. Oh, okay. So, it's hard to show because there's gears in here, you've got to press it out, but... It's a bit like a diff yeah, kind of so doing... Yeah, you, you want it in there, getting it in there, so it's squashing all the oil and squeezing it as much as it can to yep. get it away and get it pushing. And some of that scoring will be from, when, like Stu was saying earlier, was sucking air. Mm. Sort of, you want, usually you'll see when these are in good condition, see sort of a bump along the edge of the, the gear there. That, oh, yeah, that, yeah. You'll see that polished all the way into the into the right. edge there. A couple of them aren't polished. As you can see, that one's still got a it's hard to it's hard to get the light not to reflect on it. But you can see there's still a dark stain along there. Where it would have once been, but it's not working there now because the gears are yeah, yeah. they're a little bit worn, but they're not beyond yeah the life expectancy. Yeah, cool. But yeah, I'd say this has been a pump out of another out of a bigger engine at some stage. Okay. To hack this off. Oh, right. So a V12 or a V6, another inline or a 671 mm -hmm. has another set of gears. Ah, right. And the double set. It actually stay stack up, for, yep. per se. And so that's been chopped down and had an end cap put on and yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. You can actually see the saw marks if you really get up close. Yeah, right. Compared to that one, which is a yeah, machined, off, machined edge. Yeah, yeah. They, usually, yeah. they usually are machined when they're the right. Yeah, yeah, and it's completely square edge. That's got a slight chamfer on it. Hasn't yeah. It? yeah. We now have four con rods with uh, clearance little end bearings by uh, Thorn Lee cylinder head engine reconditioning. So let's get up to Adrian's. Detroit having a good drink from a puddle. At least we've had the rain. I'm guessing this was Adrian's box originally, given how many Detroit parts he buys from Cutting Edges. So that's... Looks better. They're much nicer now. Yep, very good. Um, very little... Play. Yeah, like yeah. it's quite... Very nice. Excellent, well, that's what we like. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm glad you approved too. <laughs> yes, exactly. It gives it the bark of approval. Yep, so yes, no, they're nice. They're Excellent. Nice. That's what we like. You want to see? Because the engine sits in the boat on a nine degree slope, we decided to do a bit of experimenting to see which way it would be best to install the pan. And it's interesting, the two lines intersect pretty much... In the middle, yeah. In the middle anyway. So it's showing you that it is a centre point. At the moment, so if you're pointing gearbox yeah, up in the sky, right, yeah. this line would become horizontal. So if we put the belly at the front, which is the counterintuitive, but you're dead right. I think it does give you the biggest volume. Yeah. You've got, you got inches above the pickup. Yeah. And a bigger volume. Yeah. 
You're a genius again, Adrian. No, no, it's no, a good no, idea. I don't know it's, so ca- it's so counterintuitive, though, but it's, it it's, seems it's right. Right, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. No, so that's, you've mocked up the... Yeah, I've not tacked on the, under the pump bracket yet, but yeah, yeah. I'm going to tack it up now. But that's sort of roughly where we're looking at being. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Nice. And then a bracket. Uh, yes, to come down from the end cap. Yeah. So every end cap's got thread on it for whatever you want to mount. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're all can, just yeah, they're all got um, anything. Yeah. yeah. Because that end cap would have been they made a billion of them because they would have gone in a four seventy one, three seventy one. They would have just come out of the plant and they would have put them in a block and machined them. So they yeah. had a hundred, you know. So they all so they can just go anywhere. Yeah. Shall we see if it sits there? Put the pan up. Well, look at that, it hangs there on its own. Good start. <laughs> yeah, I think as long as he doesn't hit here. Ooh. What did you think about that? It's a little close, but we can see. Mm. It's a good start. Up. It's there. Mm-hmm. Put the bolt in. Yeah. Nailed it. A little bit of a twist in it, but mm. I think we can deal with that in our wisdom. Oh, yeah. oh, it's hot. Oh, no. <laughs> Just break the tack, that's the way. Anyway, that's all right. Mm. A, little bit, a little bit to the back, maybe. Not much. No. no. Oh, and then we actually with that off, we can see how much clearance we've got on the rest of the pipe. That's good. Let's see it. Hang on, I get the torch on. Hey Siri, torch on. It's on. Oh heaps. Oh, heaps. Nice. Nice. Very oh, good. I can see where it was tacked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can put it. I put it back there. And a little bit to the back will be all right. And that fits good. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, done. One oil pickup. Excellent. Custom. So you just put a little bit of Loctite right in the rim where it's gonna, don't squeeze it, just sort of get the coming out of the tip, so it's just sort of, just spreading it around. Don't put great puddles in there, you'll end up with it inside the piston pin bearing and then right. it'll grab on the piston pin and then it don't move yeah, or it'll gotcha. tear the bearing. So just sort of wiping it on. Yeah. That'll go into there. There's a little bit of thinners on the rag. Still damp. Just making sure there's no oil or residue on there so it sticks nicely. Mm-hmm. Lock tight. So it actually sits quite nicely in there on the little edge, ready to go in. Mm-hmm. And the fly there. It's about how it sits before you knock it in with the tool. Mm-hmm. So there's different tools. So this is for a trunk 71, there's one for a 53, and then there's one for a 92. Right, all different. And, then, all, and they're all different. And then there's the 92 one is should be the same as the 71 crosshead. Oh, okay. So which is the crosshead is the style where the Conrod bolts actually to the piston pin. Yeah, right. And so, so the, that's... The, 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 the little retainer's a little bit smaller. Okay. So yeah. So it bolts? Actually bolts onto the gudgeon pin. Oh, okay. Um, I'll dig something out for you. So we yeah, look, cool, but yeah. yeah. It'll just give you an insight to what that looks like. I've heard it said before, but I've never seen one, yeah. Yeah, and these sound different. So a 71 crosshead sounds different to a 71 trunk. They're just different. There's a different little note. It's not a great difference, but there's a little note difference. In when it. it's running. Yeah, yeah. when you pull it up a hill, you hear one going past you. Oh, that's <laughs> that, and it's not, 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 yeah. So just nice, sharp blow, probably two. See that, yeah. The little cup on it and... It's all cut nicely and it's gone down. You can actually see the polished... Get the light on it. Can you see that on the light? It's probably better. Oh, I see what you're saying, inside the... Yeah, so it's wiped the, wiped the bit of white metal off that's in there. You can tell it's gone in and cleaned that up and locked in. 
it's no distortion to it like there's no if you look across the it's a nice curve all very the uniform around. isn't it yeah yep. so we'll vacuum test that one in yeah. a minute and so this just got that oh so it still has a flat spot it has a little it? flat spot in it but yeah obviously yeah. just a little bit the, but it doesn't actually leave the flat spot mark no you can't see it at all on there so yeah, yeah. interesting excuse me the slippery shit. Ah, uh, for the for the bearing. Yep. The pin. Pin to go in. Yep. Probably should have done it before I. Yeah. Right. Getting too excited about the whole process. Distracted by the lights, the camera crew, yeah, the uh, oh, yeah. yeah no, the no, like Stu, Stu was trying to flash his nipples around. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. a part of the apprenticeship. That's right. Uh, a bit on the inside of the Conrod as well. Mm -hmm. So they've all been, as you've seen before, they're all been reamed and ready to go. Got a nice finish to them. So Yeah, much tighter now, much, isn't it? Much snugger too, like mm -hmm. you can feel it. Even with the piston on there, you can't feel it flopping around. It's quite nice. So the Conroy can go any way. Okay, yep. Piston is symmetrically round. There is no number to the right, number to the left, yeah. or anything like that. It's symmetrical. Um, they're all the same, all the way through, unless it's a Series 60. Four stroke, but we're not, we're not going there. Let's <laughs> not get ahead of ourselves. That's right. So you should just line up and then... It should just... Pretty mm. much falling on its own, which it's doing. Yeah, nice. So that sits in there nicely. Oh, right, so there's even a cup to the yeah, end the, of the gudgeon pin. Yeah, the gudgeon pin, yeah. so it actually probably doesn't bash into the end of the um, piston pin. So, yeah. Shoot, look out. <laughs> No, Supervisors here. Hasn't got a single one. No, that's right, you won't be grabbing my nipple for one. <laughs> Wardrobe consultant. can't actually put your finger inside this time to sort of level it off a bit but it's this one's just this one and sat there nicely yeah right so last time you can kind of get to put both sides yeah, in, yeah yeah you can't do it now but so back in with the tool find the hammer again central same here. Left a nice, yeah, symmetrical marking, which is always it's a really good indicator that you've got it in right. It's gone well, but yeah. But don't always assume that it, it is right. Like, mm -hmm. make sure you do vacuum test them and do all of that. Like, it's confirm it, yeah, to confirm it. So yeah, if I haven't tested these two yet to be vacuum tested, then so just do them all and then oh, test them all at the end. Test them all at the end and then yeah. So when you buy pistons, though, they only give you two. Seals. <laughs> so if you cock it up, yeah, you, you can buy them individually. So okay, yeah, they are available individually, so yep. you can go and get more. And don't go and think you're going to make some out of a bit of tin and drive it in there. Right, yeah. Like it's going to be a perfectly mm. nice machine. But just for just for interest's sake, that is not the shape of a golf ball when you're installing <laughs> your piston retainers. Not even Please, close. Please, come on, come on. There's nothing like it. Not moving at all again. Yep. Which is what we want to see. It's nice to have that confidence long before you give them, you know. There, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's not moving at all, is it? Working very nicely. And I don't think I asked you before the Loctite you put just 
Yeah, it was green locked tight or medium, green, is it? Was yeah. A, yeah. Where did I put it? I just had it two minutes ago. I'll put it back. I'll put it back over yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, like a bearing mount. Oh, okay. So 648. 648. Okay. <laughs> that one's well, but yeah, like that's a bearing mount. So yeah, like that's, a that's a retaining one, but yeah. Right. Bearing retaining mount. compound, yeah. yep. Press fit, yep. Cool. So Thank yeah, you. it'll hold things in there where it should. Very but now good. we can put some rings on and um, there. We'll make some room and put some rings on. And yeah, right. And then we'll poke them in some holes and stick some pistons in the engine. Adrian took all the oil rings out of these pistons and noticed that it does have the purple ring expanders in it, which are the turbo ring expanders. They're a lower tension than the white ones. So that explains some of the oil as well. So we had the leaking gudgeon pins and not enough pressure on the oil rings for a naturally aspirated engine. We're getting to see the end. And then it's kind of pointy bits to the bottom, to the bottom of the piston. Oh, okay, yep. Um, I always put the expander to one side. So, pointing towards the bottom of the piston, yep. yep. So, then the other one, other expander, opposite side. Just line them up with the gas and pin. Because your expansion gaps on your rings are going to be around here. So you don't want your expanders being in that area, so. Right, so the first ring to go on, nice chrome shiny ring. That'll, if you stretch them too far, they will break. They're mm -hmm. not, you'll feel that you're going to break it. Like it's not, but I just probably a bit more gentle than some others. Now, what you need to also make sure, what can happen, is the expander can overlap. This one's right. Let's see that two ends are neatly together. So what can happen, if you're not careful, is that this expander will do that. See now it's tucked behind it? Uh, right, yeah, overlapped. It's overlapped. So, not watching, go to put piston in the liner with the tool, smash. To break the rings. Ah, right. You break the ring every time. When it goes into the compressor. Yeah, when it goes into the ring compressor, it'll just smash the ring. Yeah. Now, always make sure you can see those two ends nicely flush together after you put the first ring on. Okay. So, I usually just spin the piston. Yeah. Right, so you initially had the gap, so you're saying you want the gap for... For the um, expander to one side. Doesn't matter yep. which side. Yep. To the side. Then one one the oil ring that way, so that well the oil rings 180 degrees apart. Yep. And then when we go to put them in, they'll be 180 degrees apart mm -hmm. on the other side as well. So. Mm -hmm. Work them over the they'll come over there nicely. So I've used ring expander pliers before, but it's too easy to with the, with these oil rings. To squeeze it mm. and then snap it before you before you get to do it. So you, in my experience, it's just better hands on. Like and you can feel the ring. You can feel oh, it's, that's where it wants to stop. I don't want to stretch that anymore. Just the expander. It's just too strong. Bust it. Great. Final looking top rings. So I'll you can near turn the things inside out. Before oh you really? It. Okay. Um, I'll show you in a minute. But mm -hmm. yeah. So that's we've got one one gap over here, one gap there. And always just. Put your finger on the ring, so you push it in to make sure it goes in flush. Make sure it goes in flush, all the way around you can push it in so they know that the ring's mm -hmm. definitely going to go in yep. when you're putting it in the line of fill. Yeah, right, so you've done a little pre-check. Yeah, and these are, uh, because there's um, factory liners, factory pistons, no gapping, it's all just... Well, they're pretty much determined now, like, with just not, that, that's a, a done and dusted thing with them. They, they, they all pretty much come as you get them and then the rings aren't designed to be any tighter. They, they make them so you've got your ring gap and then you don't have to touch them. Yeah. So it's, it's, the days of all of that taken from the trade, like it's, yeah, it's right. a bit of a shame. Yeah. Because it's nice to put something together. Yeah, it was well, a nice art, wasn't it? Just yeah. measuring them and... Like if I was building a race engine and we were going for horsepower, you'd be honing the shit out of the liners, opening the ring gaps up, 
and you'd be taking all the sharp edges off these liners to make them go oh, harder. Okay. Better airflow. Just so the flow doesn't get turbulent. Yep. It's um because it's quite sharp. That edge is quite yeah. sharp. So it's you know, and you're machining the shit out of the blower and you know, making them do nice things. Detroit race engine. Well, it's been done, but well, yeah. I gotta say there's a video series. Yeah, back <laughs> Don't give them ideas. When, when, I was <laughs> when I was an apprentice, we did one first all for a um, trucking company in Sydney and okay. eight ninety two, which started out life as four seventy five and became twelve hundred horsepower. Wow. So yeah, it was it was an experience. Lots That's a good apprentice project. Yeah, it was lots of different trial and error and different camshafts and different yeah, things we did. Right. Um, and trial and error was learning what would fail. Yep. Um, we were putting we put standard pistons and liners in the first one and it just grabbed them all at yeah, high revs. Yeah, right, okay. So it's like, right, we need to hone the shit out of the liners. Yep. Give them an extra couple of hour clearance. Right, fix that problem. Okay. Next problem. So yeah, but it was like an 892 doing... 3,600 revs no load. Right. So factory off the floor, they do 21. Yep. In a boat, they probably do 25, but this was doing 36. Wow. Squealing nearly. <laughs> Every time I heard it round, you'd, you'd ask it to pucker up. But, yeah. <laughs> but it was good to hear. But, yeah. And lots, no, that's of, lots cool. of black smoke. And, yeah. What a great learning exercise, though, of oh, where great. just finding out how it fails each time. And, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it did five laps and the blower, blower grabbed. Yep. What, what? What? Why? Why? Yeah. It got too hot. It's, you could see it was heat. So mm -hmm. okay, it's got too hot. It's expanded too much. Mm -hmm. Machine the hell out of the tenth air out of the blower. Mm -hmm. Put it in. What Your sheep have escaped. <laughs> oh, they're out. They've come for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner. Yeah. We're talking race Detroit, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and someone asked the other day, do I have to shear them? I only have to shear two of them. Okay. So the two black-headed ones, they naturally lose their wool. Right, okay, they just shed it. They're, yeah, they're dorpers. So okay. the two I've got to shear. Yep. Um, usually it takes me an hour or two. Yeah. There's no race. Yep. No race here. Yep. We're not that yeah. But the others are more goat-like from India. Yeah, okay. Yeah, nice. So, yeah. They're cool. All right. All right. Next set of rings. So now we can use the ring expanders. These mm -hmm. are for little pistons. So they just slide in. Mm -hmm. Grabs on the end of the ring gap. They're just mm. easy. Then I just put them all up in the one spot to start with. Right, and do your clocking afterwards. Oh, and there, yeah. is, there is a timing mark, so there's an O to the okay. top. Okay, right. Like most piston rings, it's just yep. So O to the top. top. Um, the 92s have got a different shape top ring. They have a. Um, Actually tapered. You can actually you'll actually see that it's tapered in. Um, oh, on the outside edge. Yeah. That's the trunk piston for the seventy one, but mm -hmm. you can see it's tapered in the ninety two there. Okay. Tapered. So Stu um, asked me before about making liner tools. Oh yeah. So this is one I've started. Um, this is for a series sixty. So they need to be two piece. Conrad actually won't fit through the liner. So. I've got to split this down the sides. I put a hinge on it so it opens it up, and then I'll put something on the side here just so it claves it up and squeezes it again. So then the piston can go in, let it go, and I can get it back past the conrod. Um, but yeah, it's just an old liner which has been had a taper machined on it, parted off. So like, you don't have to go and buy a genuine tool. Mm -hmm. You can make your own. The longer the taper, the nicer the piston will fall down the hole. Um, I'll get my liner tool for this and just show you there's a little edge, which is pretty um, small. So you can see it's got a nice long taper, nice shape to line it up. It also has a small edge. That helps. Because they're going from the bottom, there's a slight chamfer on the bottom. All oh, right. Which helps that line that up just to stop it yeah. buckering off on there. Um, this is my old 71 liner tool. <laughs> this is made out of a bit of steam pipe. Um, <laughs> but same thing, it's just got a taper on it, but it doesn't have that edge. You know, if I use it, I've got to sort of poke the head in, line it up. Right. It's a bit cantankerous. So, oil the liner up. There's no such thing as too much oil. Or too, there's definitely one that's too little. But yep. So you can't. You can see that it's. Locked in there. Slopped in there, yeah. Nice and wet. 
<coughs> so the same with the piston. I know we were worried about oil coming out of the exhaust. It might come in the first few minutes of running, but oil the rings up. No, I can see you rotate them just to get the oil in yeah, there. Yeah, get the oil yeah. in there and get them. Just to make sure, like. Yeah. So the oil ring, one, two, there. So then the bottom one, where is it gone? There it is. There's the. So we've got that that gap, the top gap on that set of rings at the up there, mm -hmm. and then we'll send that one up just over there like that. So that using the top ring there. So there's oil can't. But they're going all the way around, it's got to, yeah. to get there. So then the same here, just put some oil on the outside of the skirt too. So the same again, so 180 degrees apart. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It is 180 degrees apart. Yeah. Just, just, just for the viewers, <laughs> it is 180 degrees apart. So you were apart. just feeling with your hand when you're yeah, doing it that way anyway, yeah. yeah. So, and the tool needs to be moved up as well. Mm -hmm. Oh. I sort of feel it doesn't want to slide off. Like it's... Yeah, it's a clever idea, just that little lip. Little lip, just to... So they're all right up. Don't rush the piston down the hole, just... It'll go in nicely. Just... just feel it goes in. It's a little... Oh, definitely. There it goes. Yeah, just the, yeah, the nuts just stop that from coming off, so... Oh, right, it was just the nuts yep. doing it, yeah, right. And then that just push that all the way to the bottom. The piston's in the line are ready to go in. Right, and the critical thing... So with number three, we've already sized all these up for the block. Yep. And that is all ready to slop in a hole. And the critical thing then was that it has to go in from the... Bottom of the, the sleeve. Bottom. You cannot put these in from the top. Yeah. You will break the oil ring. Um, because they scrape quite hard when they come. Mm, yeah, that's probably the best angle. Down back down the liner. If you put it in from the top, you'll actually chip this edge and pull it off. Yeah. Um, and it goes in. So that's why you push it in from the bottom, gets it in there. And it can scrape because it wants to scrape as much oil as it can back down into the sump when it's running. So yeah, stop it from hanging up around the piston pins and everything. So yeah, yeah. So if you go from the top, you'll break them. Yeah. We so as it. long as it, yeah. So they can't pass the ports. No. Yes. You'll actually chip them. Yep. So it's, yeah, and yeah. so they sit. So compression rings above. Yep. Oil rings below the ports. Below the ports. Yeah, and if you put it in this end, they'll pass the pass ports it and break them. Yeah. And it also break on the top edge. Oh, as well, oh. right. It's not as, um, it's a bit hard to see, I haven't cleaned this one up yet, but th this edge on the top there's not got a lead on it like the bottom of that liner has doesn't have that little right. chamber on it too. So the lead's not there nicely to do it. Yeah. There is a small lead, but it's not enough. Right. But just watching all the dust. Yeah. Yeah, right. Three yet yeah, from floating around in here. So yeah. It's going to be number two. Pen stands up well to diesel, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Actually, surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hasn't everything? Oh, that's true. Six weeks, sod off. So, so this is the ring that I dropped the piston on and broke. Dickhead. <laughs> but, anyway, so they are very brittle. It's like, it's not a lot of force here. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, I and mean, they're just brittle, they just break, like, keep breaking. So, do be careful. It yeah, gives you an idea, over expand it. Yeah, but, um, 
Once we finish doing this piece, and I'll show you on the other ones what we can do to the top ones, like, and you'll be surprised. How far you, so you can... can actually twist them around 180 degrees. Wow. Before, they won't, still won't break. Okay. So. That evening I ended up staying at Adrian's so we could uh, have a few beers without driving and then next morning got straight into it. Well, when we all slowly woke up anyway. Took a few cups of coffee, that's for sure. We didn't exactly spring into action. I couldn't find my boots this morning. So I'm pretty sure I left them by the steps. And then walking back over there, one of them was by the step again. I wonder what could explain this. You. Come here. <laughs> Where's my other boot? After hours of interrogation, you still can't tell me who's a good boy. Where did you put it? Hmm? Where did you put it? Alright, so we've had a bit of a discovery this morning. If you have a look at this ring, it's actually one ugly mug on the other side. It's actually <laughs> got a bow in it, like it's not nice. So, it's trying to put the ring on and didn't feel right, didn't want to sit nicely. Um, and it, does, it doesn't look like a man. It looks like it's possibly been damaged in packaging, but it won't sit nicely in the. If I've got to push that into the to get that to sit in and it's not it's all wanting to pop out it's quite firm i've got to really push it not it's not like i can't yeah, there's a big difference isn't there between yeah. those yeah so it's quite tight which not on it just it'll it'll jam up during the engine run and and won't won't seal properly it'll be it'll end up probably breaking or wearing out too fast so we've got the, the new straight version it's nice it's a lot better there. yeah so we'll bring up there, bring up there goes to show if something just doesn't seem right come back look at it yeah don't if run with got it got another one pull it off check it with it like compare it because maybe it was the piston maybe the piston has been mm -hmm. damaged you know like that's what i started to look at first if someone if something hadn't happened around the base here and Semis the piss, but no, nah, they're not. Yep. Oh, look at that, looks like it's been on the piss all night, Stu. <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> so, so what is involved in changing, like, a NA Detroit like this? To, 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 to make this a turbo, to turbo yeah. you would have to change the pistons, so it's a different compression ratio, yeah. it's a bowl shape. Um, and just for this, open up the change it to adjust the blower clearance to see they yeah. end up with a little bit more clearance on the blower. Yeah. Um, if, if you were doing leaving if you were just gonna for you, I'd probably just leave the N sixties in it. Mm -hmm. The turbo would probably just clean up the little bit of unburnt fuel you get from the lack of efficiency. Um, and would make it a really nice little efficient engine. Yeah, right. um, but then if you know you want more power so then we put the bigger bigger turbo on um, Use a couple of different blower blower speed gears for the back, so in a high horsepower application, say in a, a, a big pleasure craft, mm -hmm. the blower will be going at two to one rather than two and a half to one. Um, to speed that up, but also the open the clearance is up. You've got a lot bigger turbos. They, the seawater cooling coolers in front of the blower inside the block. Oh, really? So that a whole lot of rafter things change. Okay. Um, when you really want to start making some horsepower, but just to make these turbos would be just changing the pistons, um, pistons and liners, change them as a set. So it's just start from scratch. But yeah. Um, and then everything else pretty much just yeah, so turbo blower clearance, and blower and clearances and so lower compression pistons. Lower compression, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, and they work really well on these. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so it makes it burn cleaner, a bit more oxygen. So yeah, yeah, cleans up a little bit of unburned fuel and you get a little bit better acceleration out of it. Okay. Um, and the bigger the turbo, the more lag you have if you, when you're trying to get it going. So, which you, then you go for bigger injectors, then you then need to go, okay, I'm still lagging, but I, so you need to adjust the injectors and put what they call fuel modulators in. So it helps control how, how much fuel goes in on hard acceleration. So they'll, They'll keep, they'll run the lean, keep it lean, 
to get it to spin up faster, get some heat in the exhaust, then as that boost builds, then it'll open the modulator and let it and uh, let, more, let more fuel in. So and it doesn't just bog down. It doesn't bog down, with more the, black smoke yeah, everywhere. Black smoke. All right, Here we so are. we're going to put this little sucker back in the engine. Mm -hmm. um, so we've put some international compound, which mm -hmm. is slippery grease but it tensions enough so you get the right tension. Um, if you read that when you read the book it'll everything they say you should it's got to be tension international compound. Um, these are what they call lubrite nuts. Um, in the book it'll tell you there's a tension for the lubrite nut and the castellated nut in the 71. Right. The castellated nut's a little bit tighter and then you put your slip in through. Mm -hmm. Pretty early stuff. Which by well, now you'd probably any that you might find would be in an old tractor out of a paddock but Probably find they've all been replaced and now it's lube right nuts. And right, they just upgraded them. Yeah, they've yeah. upgraded and made them better. These aren't as tight, but they've got go one way. They've got machined, nice flat there. Yep. And you can see what well, this one's. This one's. Well, this one's actually. The, whoever put this on the first time. Yep. Didn't put it on the right way. Ah, right, upside down. Upside down. So you can see the edge there for it to run against the back of the, the back edge of the cap. Yep. So pimples, pimples out and flat. Yep. Flats, flats, in. flats in, so yeah. yeah. Um, and then more of your uh, assembly grease on the bearings. Yeah, a bit of slippery stuff, and when someone gets to lay on the ground and catch the catch the piston while it pushes it oh, in. Oh, you'll be right down there, will you? Yeah, yeah, yeah fine. <laughs> All right. Nah. So some people are saying they always assemble them on their ends, but I guess you got to strip all the stuff off, and then you got to change them around. Well, you can you can do it. It isn't too bad to do it on its end. Like if you didn't have the gearbox on. Yep. Um. Yeah, you can. I lose because. It's a big thing to lift. It's a big over. thing to move constantly. Yeah. yeah. So if I had an engine rotating stand, absolutely. Yeah. So if anyone wants to donate one, I'll gladly take it. I'd gladly take it. There you go. <laughs> go fund me for a, a uh, Adrian's engine stand. Yeah, yeah no, I love one. But the little the little trolley works well. It sort of. But also, like you know, you look at these engine stands, and when you're talking seven hundred and something kilos, yeah, they're rated to two fifty or something. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. so they're only 60, 60 to seventy foot pounds. I always do them to seventy. Mm -hmm. I, like, I, like, I like that sound of a little bit more than a little bit less. Yes, yeah. comes, something coming undone. So, and also the liner inserts need to go in. Ah, yes. So these they come in different thicknesses, so you get the liner height right, um, and you can get shims as well to get them right. 46 is getting to the bottom end, so you'd want to come back up a bit, but it's okay. So, right, so one power makes you know, it can do, yeah. Like, and 44 is like, so you 44 is not really good. Oh, okay, 45 is very happy, 44 yep. is excellent, okay. So, yeah, and you wouldn't go any higher than 44, right? Okay, yeah. It is, and it's, it's only just that I've got it slightly cocked, yep. so it's... It's getting like dead straight again. Yeah. But it's good to know that it happens, you know? Oh, that's all right. It's the reality yeah, it's there, of the it's job. It's there, it's there, it's there. Yeah. So. Otherwise people are like, oh, what, what's going wrong for me? That's right, and then the thing does get a think like you saw the ring just want to go wrong. Yeah, just think it, yeah. Coming down, yeah. right? Yeah. That was a really nice. Are you ready to push the piston down? Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, it's looking lined up well. Nice. Yep. So, tang to tang. Remember, tang on the bearing. Oh all yeah. Way, same size as the other tang. Like they won't go in the same spot above each other, but yeah, it'll be the same size. It'll be. When you pull the peanut butter because I'm a couple of deep with hey, oh, oh, you've got to make sure you put them together with peanut butter. Like, oh, and people actually and do. do oh, no. Like, oh, it's like yeah, getting close. Yeah, that'll do. A little bit further, maybe a bit. You can always guide the pin on. Alright. Yeah, got hold of the studs now so you can. Yep. And you're ready for the pin? Yep, go for it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I got the cap and the nuts. Yeah. Here we go. Yep. 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 Y
go. Yeah, it's pretty quick, isn't it? Well, you all day. Like a good machine is to be heard someone jackhammering out the front, would stop straight away. Right, makes sense, yeah, just stop, don't do anything. So you should be able to put the pump up without yep. putting the shims in. Right, and then we'll check the backlash on it. Or? Yeah, because the shims actually have slots in them, so you can slide them in. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. So, so just don't them, tighten it up. Just you can get them all there. Now, if this is not, if this is shimmed too tight, and you tighten this up, can you crack the housing or anything? Or you can damage. You'll 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 end up. It will it'll howl its head off when you start it. Right. Yeah. But for uh, the purposes probably, of shimming, we're not. Gonna yeah. Um, but you'll also feel it won't. You'll you'll feel it when it's bottomed out. Like. Yeah. So. When it gets up there and you get, yeah. you, you, so you, you want, have a look to so start nipping the bolts up yeah, and okay, keep so rocking the gears. Yeah, okay. Right, just give them a little. Yeah, yep. and okay. keep checking that you've got clearance. And if you get to a point where there's no clearance, okay, it's too tight. Right. Yeah. Fourth hour would be plenty and, and, yeah. and is in, in the ballpark of where it should be. Yeah. Um, And look, some people just put lots of shims under there. Yeah, it's got clearance, that'll do. And look, yeah. it's, the gear's not going to slip. But let's let's make it not make the gear train any noisier than what it really That's needs it. to be. That's it, yeah, exactly. Okay. And it will just cause premature wear. <laughs> These are the shim shapes, so you can just drop it down, slide them in. Oh, not much at all, actually. Put so, the other ones in. Well, let's go one at a time. Yep. Five, beginning of everywhere. Yeah. Two thin ones there. Ah, uh, together. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. So there you go. So two thins, all right. We'll, we'll go for the thinner one, and then we'll just see. Yeah. See what we see. Because you've got to remember the gears like this. So as it comes away, it increases faster. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yes. so you're coming out. The, the, it's going. There's a point going into. There, so it's actually as, it come, as they both come away from each other, it accelerates. Right, the, which is why we went like two thou, four thou, before you knew it was fifteen thou. Yeah, like, yeah, okay. Uh, the other, did you give me two little ones? Yeah, you did. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. So that's from below zero there yep. to what eight or something up there. So it's it's getting up there. Yeah, that's plenty. Yeah. That's what I mean, there, it grows fast. Yeah, and that's less less shims than we were in originally, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, nice. Uh, now, I guess I should, and it's only going to shrink a little bit when I tighten these bolts, Yeah, yeah we'll it? give it a good whizzer now and just double yeah. check it. Like it's, yeah, yeah, just yeah, your that's finger. Five. Yeah, that's, 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 that's really it. Yeah, right, it's probably a better test, isn't it? Because you're not yeah. really turning it at all, no. you just... So that's, that's pretty good, that's five there. Yep. Of it. Yeah, it does. Looks yeah. pretty. Uh, That's nice. Worn off. Yep. Beautiful. It won't be rattling its head off. It's yep. just be nice. Okay. I'm not going to accentuate any gear wear. Yep. Because the gear will wear, so it's going to open up. In That's it. It's only going to get bigger, isn't it? That's right. So, yeah, and hopefully it's not going to get stupidly big. Yep. But yeah. So now we can put our regulator on here. Bolt that up. Yep, a couple of gaskets just yep, each side. Yeah, gaskets there and there. Um, and then we'll put our pickup on, which should, and then we'll make, make, our little, a make our brackets. I'll leave you to do that while I get the head ready. Yep, okay. So uh, that's a half inch spanner. Yep. I think another one, there's the other one there, the other two bolts for the yep. other one. All right. Half into the block. Ah, uh, yeah, yep. You can see there, the little vent window where it bypasses to let the pressure out getting ready to put the head back on soon. So just backing these two bolts out. These sit inside pockets in the head. So they're all right to tighten up once it's on, but you can't get them past it. So just back them off until it's flush. So there's just sealing water running through the so block. This is sealing water. Yep. This one seals water and oil. Okay. So that's on each the oil side. Yeah. At the front. Yep. Well, actually, if the head, so this is the oil feed for the head. This one, mm -hmm. when the head is situated with the exhaust to you at the moment, 
We turn the head around, that will be the oil feed oh, okay. for the head it turns. Yep. Um, it, and it, when you pressure test the block, if you leave them out, you, water will go down there and you get a false reading. So, ah, right. Um, we won't mention any names to who's done that in the past. <laughs> but, so they're, yeah, they're pretty simple. Um, and they just, they push in, they don't, they don't, they don't even really push in, they just sort of sit in there nicely. A little bit of resistance to put them in, just to hold them there. And they stay there nicely. Um, that's a compression seal. That's what seals the compression between the top of the liner and the head. Mm -hmm. um, like I said the other day, you, can, you can't see it now, but they actually they are folded sections inside that panel. But, it, but if you can actually see that's quite fat. I think one of the older ones is here. So you can actually see how much it's compressed. Uh, once the head's once talked the head up. talked up and squashed, how much it does actually Bring it down. It down yeah. yeah, so this is a fair bit of. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and, and you were saying before it's shimmed. Crushed. Yeah, yes. so it's shimmed under the liner. Under the liner if you need to. To get the 45 yeah. thou drop there. Just, yep. yeah, okay. So then it. So now we'll set this on. We'll set all these on. They're on. So now is the perimeter sealed. Mm -hmm. um, this can be a bit of a pain in the neck. Yeah. Tend to want to sometimes pop out. And these are all in dry, just drop yep, them straight in, in yeah. Yep. Um, now there is a join. So, feel it, it's not. Don't pull on, don't hold onto it and pull it, you'll stretch it. Mm -hmm. And then, then you'll have all more trouble. So there's the join. Yep. So if it was a V series engine and the block was laying upwards, I would put the joint, the joint usually goes up to the blower in the middle of the engine. Yep, high side. High side, so if it does bust, there's less chance of lots of oil coming out. But because this is um, in line, I usually put it to the balance shaft side because there's more oil splashing on this side if something goes wrong. Okay. Because the camshaft is a bit more splashing around, so I tend to put it to the left side. The green is designed just to so you know which way to put it. Um, so you haven't put a twist in it as you go? Put and a twist in it as you go. Um, usually it doesn't go too bad. We'll see how bad I go this time. Just, to, just, just so people know it doesn't always go perfectly. And not everyone's got two people there to yeah. have a go. Um, you could and not, you... All, not all the blocks have these rounded corners. You actually see the... It's got little dowels or something in it. Yeah, it's got dowels in it. So like a 92 and a lot of the others are actually, it's a, it is a pointed corner, like it's okay. where, the, where the mills run through when they've made the block, it's a milled corner. And that, you can't, you can, you can't, they're not, re, they're not use a reusable seal either, like yeah. they, they compress away and they stay compressed and don't bounce back. Um, so they are designed to, there's a throwaway item. And so this was just a head seal kit that yeah, top came kit. Yeah, top kit. Top yeah. kit. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, some people will actually put matchsticks in the corner to help okay. jam it. That's, that's an old trick. It's an old trick yeah, to get the matchstick in there to help jam it in the corner and hold it tight so mm -hmm. it won't pop out. This one, this is actually um, early 71 in line. Head studs. Yep. They had head studs. Oh, okay. You so just, just put a nut on top, right? Yeah, put a nut on top and just a screw to the block. But okay. The other one, my matching one, is probably more gearbox aligned in the back of the <laughs> So I sort of just use the matching pair for the series. I'm going to do to go around the outside. Ah, yes. This gives it something to start on, like, yeah. rather than nothing. Or even oil, if you just squirted the oil can all over, it'll run away. At least it's just sitting there. And it'll That's it. It'll stay until we get it. Up, yep. It'll still be there tomorrow when we fire yeah, it up. Right. Yeah. So you're just filling that little groove. Yeah, a little groove, just to, so the oil does try and track out under the O-ring. It sort of, it's, it's sealed up. It's a bit of an art. There was a perfect thing happening, but Stu decided to start filming again. 
So if I make a mess, please don't blame me. It's always my fault. That's it. I'm coming to terms with that. And it squeezes out, like it comes out. So you can dress it up when it comes out. Don't be afraid to wipe it off and make the edge look nice. Don't leave a big curtain hanging out like a dirty old man in a skirt or something. <laughs> Two, three, good. Now, all our O-rings are good. Yeah. And so the roller springs are always going to leave it a bit up. I'll leave it a little bit up until we, until we actually bolt it down. Yep. Um, so there is a little mark in that one, which we'll, we'll, we'll replace that one. It's probably the worst out of all of them, so just to make them nice. Um, I've got some marks in that one. This is probably the worst out of all of them. All right. Just from the previous water that was in the engine before they even started the tear down. This one, just a few water stains. On this one, there's actually no... Oh, besides, in the same spot where there's no bearing running, but yeah, it's pretty good there's just stain marks in that one so that cleaned up pretty good and the same with this one it so yeah some fat under the heads that's slippery and in the threads nice and lube to them no resistance you can do this down with the rattle gun it's just at least something doesn't feel you can feel it right that's just my blue, yeah makes sense some people do and that, that's okay just, and you'll feel if there's if you've forgotten to blow the bolt holes out yeah you'll, okay oh that's that's bottoming out that's it's, um mm. hitting some oil and squishy because yeah. it'll tighten up and you'll wait a second it'll go loose ah uh, right as the oil squeezes up past the thread yep build pressure then slowly releases it yeah so I've just done them down 60, then I went into 120, and now I'm doing 180. Now to 180, yeah. And there is no retention once you've run it. There's no need to. They don't tend to come loose like a car-type head gasket. Right, there's no retention after so many hours. No. Beautiful. Well, thanks for watching. I'm back at Adrian's on Monday when we'll be hopefully firing the engine up for the first time after this rebuild. So hope you had a great Christmas and have a happy new year and I'll see you next year. Bye. Say goodbye, Daisy. Close enough. Daffy, you must be pleased. The reign of terror is over. Your head can heal. We finally caught him. Buck, buck, buck's exactly what I thought too. Oh, he's even sitting down now. You're gonna have a panic when you see it's me, aren't you? Your arch nemesis. Well, calm down. Oh, jeez, oh, please, dude. That's enough. You're gonna hurt yourself. All right, you're going on your first boat ride. Learn to get along with others. Life will be a lot better. There's a lesson for us all. Christmas lunch, Daffy. We've had Christmas lunch.
You can have Christmas lunch. Prawn bits. All the leftovers. Merry Christmas. Alright. There's little bits. There you go. That's it. Merry Christmas. Ha, 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 ha.